So from that, you know, scholars have concluded that the number seven is not of particular significance here. Furthermore, you have uh, Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani, he found another ten cases uh, in authentic narrations which are also of, of categories of people also included in the uh, shade of Allah's throne. Other scholars have even gone beyond that ten, like Al-Hafidh al-Sakhawi, who wrote a chapter in his book called Irshad al-Sari, in which he collected 85 other cases. However, the vast majority were uh, drawn from inauthentic narrations. But those gathered by uh, Ibn Hajar, these are authentically narrated other cases. Now, the hadith goes on to say, seven who are shaded by Allah, Almighty in his shade, fi dhilli, shaded in Allah's shade. This, for some people, became a problem. Does Allah have a shade? Is to have, if Allah has a shade, then it is making him like his creatures. To get shade, you have to have light on one side, and you're in between that light, and you get a shade. So, this became an issue. However, what we understand is that there are other narrations of this hadith in which Allah clarifies, as in the had narration of Salman, that it was not in Allah's shade, but fi dhilli arshi, in the th shade of His throne. So, what we're talking about is that time which my brother introduced on the day of judgment when people will be standing before Allah they have been resurrected the earth becomes flat they're all standing and Allah will bring the sun close the sun will become so close that it will be described as being only a mile away. And this is the source of the heat. Not Jahannam as our brother said in the, in the introduction. Though the heat of Jahannam is still to come. But the heat on that day will be the heat of the sun. The sun which will be brought within a mile as described by Prophet Muhammad And at that point the heat becomes so intense that everybody is sweating. And they are sweating according to their deeds those who have a lot of good deeds then the sweat will only go up to their ankles those whose deeds are uh, are less it will go up to their knees or to their waist those who de his evil deeds are many they will be drowning in their sweat this will be a day as our brother said when everyone will desire the shade of Allah's throne but still the concept of the shade of Allah's throne for those who have difficulty accepting how Allah has described Himself and the things which belong to Him. They who explain that the throne of Allah is His dominion, His authority and His rule. Groups like the Mu'tazilites and the Kharijites and the Ash'aris. These people explain the way Allah's throne saying, No, Allah does not have a throne. What he is referring to here is his dominion. However, those on the correct path, who didn't deviate from the way that Islam, the Quran and the Sunnah was understood by the messenger by his companions may Allah be pleased with all of them those who stayed on that path they maintain that Allah has a throne as he said however they avoided getting into how is his throne and explaining how his throne is it is enough for us to know as the Prophet ﷺ explained that the footstool, the kursi, mistakenly translated as the throne also in Ayatul Kursi, 
the Kursi, if we compare the whole of this universe, everything created, to the Kursi, it is like a brass ring thrown in the middle of the desert. And the Kursi, in relationship to the Arsh, to the throne, is like that same brass ring thrown in the middle of a desert. So the whole of creation, in relationship to the Kursi, is insignificant, a brass ring in a desert. And the Kursi, in relationship to Allah's throne, is also like a brass ring in a desert. So what are we? What is this creation like in relationship to Allah's throne? Virtually nothing. And Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu in a hadith narrated by Abu Huraira in Sahih al-Bukhari said, if you ask Allah, ask Him for Firdaus, as it is, it is the middle and the highest point of paradise from which the rivers of paradise spring forth. And above it is the throne of the Most Merciful. Now if we take as, the, as those rationalists would have us take, that the throne of Allah is His dominion, are we saying that Allah's dominion is above paradise? I mean this is the position of His dominion? Or if we take the verse from Surah Hud, Verse 7, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَكَانَ عَرْشُهُ عَلَى الْمَا Allah's throne is above the water. We'll say His dominion is above the water. Or worse, in Surah Al-Haqqah, verse 17, when Allah says there, وَيَحْمِلُ عَرْشَ رَبِّكَ يَوْمَئِذٍ ثَمَانِيَةً And on that day, Allah's, the throne of your Lord will be born by eight, eight angels. Are we saying that Allah's dominion will be carried by eight angels on the day? So we can see that this idea of explaining away Allah's throne as His dominion is clearly in error. It is clearly in error. It is the throne of Allah. Now, in the hadith, the Prophet Muhammad goes on to describe those who are shaded by the throne. The first is the Imam Adil, the righteous and just Imam. One who is just in himself and in his rule. His justice is not for show or to establish uh, relationships with others with ulterior motives. His justice is a justice based fundamentally on his fear of Allah. He treats all justly. He, he repels oppression. All before him are equal. And he implements Allah's laws on all of the creation over which he has authority. As I said, his justice is from within. It is not justice as a facade externally in order to gain certain uh, positions or control or power or wealth in this life. Now, this position of being the Imam Adil, the ultimate ruler of the Muslim state, who is just, of course, this does not include women. Because Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu had said that a people who make a woman their ruler will not succeed. So we know in this case, in this category, the head of state, women are excluded. However, Prophet Muhammad said, Kullukum ra'in. Each and every one of you is like a shepherd responsible for his.